Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please subscribe. If you're old here, welcome back, I already said that. So this is like the first sit down video in the new apartment. So if the background looks different from what we usually do, that is why, and we will be posting a furnished apartment tour as soon as everything is done, but we're still waiting on some stuff to come and to set everything up. But today, the video I am going to be doing is about workload at Barnard. So someone requested this a while ago. I apologize that it's taken this long to get to it. I'm going to just be talking about stress culture, what the academic environment is at Barnard in Columbia, what the workload is, and just my insights on all that stuff. And, you know, tips for people going to their first semester at Barnard in Columbia or even if you're already a Barnard Columbia student, this could also be helpful, hopefully. I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get right into it. So if you're going to Barnard or Columbia, I feel like you have a pretty good understanding of the fact that the workload is going to be a lot. It's a very rigorous school. It's, you know, academically focused and ultimately going to college is about coming out with a degree and hopefully you learn something along the way but yes, if you are sitting here wondering, is the workload heavy? Yeah, it for sure is, but that does not mean it is impossible to do well or to handle. I think you just need to be prepared and recognize that the workload is going to look different from what your high school workload was, but that you can do it. I do think that the workload varies greatly from department to department and major to major, and it also looks a lot different. So you can kind of have equal workloads, but they can be different if that makes sense. So you can have essays and writing versus more problem sets and stuff like that. Good rule of thumb is the amount of credits for a class is supposed to be how much hours of work per week, I believe. So that's why three credit classes are, you know, pretty standardly, standardly easy because it's supposed to be three hours of work a week and like one or two credit classes are usually dance or gym or something like that because it's really basically no work outside of the classroom of course four credit classes are more rigorous and difficult because it's four hours of work a week that's why i think you need to look at the number of credits you're taking total for a semester so the minimum at barnard i'm not sure about columbia but for barnard it's 12.5 credits per semester so if you follow that algorithm that rule of thumb that means it's 12 and a half hours of work per week outside of the classroom, which is like, sounds like a lot. And especially considering the fact that most people take about 15 credits per semester, because to graduate, you need 122 credits over eight semesters. So what's the math for that? And also with workload, I do think the workload is less or more depending on your goals academically as a student. So if you're the kind of student who wants to come out of college with literally a 4.0 or or a 3.9 or 3.8, you really are going to be putting a lot more t t time in to your studying versus someone who is not as focused on necessarily getting A's. And you can kind of work your schedule around how you want to approach academics. So if you are coming into college and right off the bat you're like, I want to join Greek life, this club, this sport, ba -ba -da -ba -da, then try to organize your schedule in a way that is accommodating for that. Which of course is difficult when you're an incoming freshman because you don't know which days certain clubs will be meeting, etc. But I can tell you most extracurriculars will happen towards in like nighttime hours or kind of after the school day hours if that makes sense. So if you want to do a lot of extracurriculars, leave your afternoons and your nights free. So most classes don't go past like six o'clock unless you're doing a lab or some, you know, there's always weird classes like that that don't fit the norm. But I would say if you want to do a lot of extracurriculars and things outside of the classroom, try to make your schedule accommodating for that. So maybe that means taking morning classes like 840s. You know, maybe that means having your last class be 110 so it gets out at 225. Whatever you need to do to formulate your schedule to accommodate for what you anticipate taking for extracurriculars, that can be really helpful. Okay, so the next things to do with extracurriculars and workloads are kind of cheesy, but I think they're true. So that is to take care of yourself first, because if you want to handle the workload and do extracurriculars and you as a human being, whether that means physically, mentally, socially, are not being taken care of, 
then nothing, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna do well academically, nor are you going to thrive with your extracurriculars. So that means eating three meals a day, getting off of your phone sometimes, actually spending time with your friends, going to the gym if that makes you feel better, all that kind of stuff. So I think a lot of people get overwhelmed by the workload because they aren't utilizing a schedule and a productive use of their time. Every day, if you can, set out goals for yourself. Like if you have Fridays free from school and work and then Saturdays and Sundays off, set a daily schedule of the schoolwork that you need to get done because it takes the stress out of things when you can have a plan for how to get everything done. Because when you just have a bunch of stuff to do and no plan, it's very daunting. So definitely plan it out. Plan to go to the library and workspaces with your friends, because then you're getting that social aspect in, you know, but you're also getting your work done. And I think it can be motivating too when you and your friend are like, we're going to the library at 10 a.m., then we'll go get lunch together, and then we'll go back to the library. And also in terms of actually doing work, make it work smarter, not harder. That means turn off your phone, like literally put your phone away. If you're using a laptop, don't be texting on your laptop. Don't be scrolling through Facebook on the side, like have self-discipline because I'm telling you when you actually focus for an hour, you can get so much more done in an hour than you would with three hours with distractions. But if you're wasting your time when you're doing your work, then you're not gonna have enough time to get everything done because it is a very rigorous workload and work schedule. So you need to use your time wisely if you're going to be successful. And another tip for scheduling along those lines is to put in long-term dates into your planner. So I recommend getting like one of those planner journal schedule things. And when you get your syllabuses, syllabi at the beginning of the semester, put in any long-term due dates that your professor has outlined for you. So if you have an exam in two months, put that in, then you have a paper due in three months or a midterm or whatever it is, put all those long-term dates out in your agenda so that they don't creep up on you and so that you can get kind of an overview of the next three months of your life, like the big things that will be due so you can see which weeks will be busier. If you have several big projects or things due in the same amount of time, you can anticipate that, work around that with your schedule because you'll see it all laid out. Alrighty, so stress culture is another aspect of workload and all that at Barnard in Columbia. So stress culture is definitely very real. I think if you're unclear about what stress culture is, it's kind of ambiguous. I feel like everybody has their own interpretation of what it means. But to me, stress culture is just a culture of, of stress. Wow, I'm a genius. It's basically normalizing being incredibly stressed all the time and sort of glamorizing it. So you'll hear people say, I was in Butler all night last night. I literally fell asleep on the desk. I haven't, I haven't had a meal yet in 12 hours or I was studying for 12 hours straight, whatever it is. And that is just not something to be proud of. It's not healthy and I don't think it's normal. And I think it's just maybe a coping mechanism for some people to kind of treat it lightheartedly, but you shouldn't be talking about that kind of stress in a positive manner. You shouldn't even be bringing it into your life. So I think it's important that when you hear people talking in that way, it's not something that you should be jealous of them for. I feel like people talk about like, oh, I was in Butler all weekend or whatever it may be. And they're saying it as if it's a positive thing, but it's okay if you in your head, if you're like, what? Like, we shouldn't be doing that. I think that's the right approach to have. And like I said, work smarter, not harder. I think there is a way to not have to have this stress culture and still be successful. The people who are the most stressed are not the ones who are doing the best. They're not the smartest. And you don't need to brag about all the work you're doing or how stressed you are in order to prove that you're doing well. I just don't think that's true. And so some just closing thoughts about the academic environment in general. So people certainly are academically focused. I would say that, um, you know, if you're going to Barnard and Columbia, you know, obviously you value academics because you got into the school and you are prepared to be a student there. And it's very academically rigorous. But I do think that the academic environment does value balancing academics with other things outside of the classroom. Barnard and Columbia are not party schools per se, but people do have fun on the weekends. You know, occasionally people go to the football games. Very occasionally. 
I mean, yeah, it's it's an academic school. It really is. It's it's not if you're looking to party all the time, probably not your school, but there definitely are people who party a lot more than others. So it's kind of a mixed bag. It's it's really hard to generalize what the academic environment is like because I think it really varies from person to person and even school to school. Like Columbia College is going to look different than GS or C's or Barnard. Like, of course, it's a, it's a bunch of different schools all meshed together, so it's hard to say. But in general, people value academics. They're there to do well in their academics, but they try to, you know, balance it with other things and a social life and everybody struggles with it, but it is a rigorous academic environment. All right, so I honestly don't even know how helpful this video will be. I don't know if I really shed light on anything important or helpful. I tried to give my honest thoughts on the workload, so hopefully some of you found this helpful. Please comment below with questions or comments. I will definitely clarify things or expand on them if you need. DM us on Instagram at MJD and NYC. We answer all of our DMs. It might take us a little bit, but we always get to them. Comment video requests because this was a request and I probably wouldn't have done it if I didn't know you guys wanted to see it. So keep commenting video requests, subscribe, like the video, and yeah, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.